Rudy Dreamer here from the Stone Ridge Homestead. Today we're going to talk about fall gardening. Uh, it's an overlooked season, uh, but especially here down in the south, it's a great opportunity to get a little bit more produce in your belly before the cold winter. So let's take a look at the seeds. is my small but ever-growing library of gardening books up here. These are some seeds that I harvested out of my garden uh, to plant for next year. That's my thing I'm learning right now is how to save seeds. Uh, and then this whole chest is full of seeds. I love this chest. It's a little beat up. Top drawer, baggies for seed collecting. You have to keep your dried herbs in a dark place. So for right now, not much, just a little bit. I got my spelantes dried and in, in there because they have to be stored in a sealed container. There's my calendula. And I have fever few in the back. Uh, so this is just where I'm keeping them for now. I don't have that many. And as I dry them, I just keep adding to them. I've dated them. Drawer number two. These are all my, well, this is my egg money. <laughs> and I keep rating it. This is all I have left. <laughs> I gotta quit rating my egg money. Um, but these are seeds as I'm frantically planting in the spring, they end up just getting thrown in here. So one of my jobs today is I'm going to be uh, organizing these into their proper place so I can get ready for my fall planting. Then I have them in alphabetical order. So it starts with asparagus. Okay. Now eventually, as I learned to save, save, for instance, up here, these are the green bean seeds that I save. Um, if these germinate, and I know these are good, they're not cross-pollinated or anything like that, then all of these can be done away with because I will be producing my own green beans. Um, I have so many because I went through and I tried all different kinds to see which ones we like the best. Um, so far we like these the best, the Blue Lake Bush. So that, those are the seeds I saved. And it takes a while because you can't plant a bunch together because they cross pollinate. So I had to plant them in different places. I tried to only do bush. That's why I still have so many pole beans left. I don't really like pole beans. They take up too much room. And they're, just, they're not very prolific. Not as prolific as a bush bean. So then we come over here. Again, these drawers are a mess. I'm in the process of organizing today. That's why I'm here. Here's my Siltis seeds. Um, I showed you that in a previous video, saving seeds. Again, if my seeds are accurate when they grow, then I can no longer, I don't have to buy these anymore. I've got my bok choy, Brussels sprouts. Oh, some good fall veggies in here. Cabbage. So I'm going to take inventory and see if I need to order any for this fall. I don't think I'm going to have to. I'm kind of working through the seeds I already have. Um, again, I have so many different kinds because I'm just trying to figure out what our favorite is. Over the next years, I'm going to be paring these down to where I just have my favorites and I don't have to have so many. Um, here's our corn. Yeah, so it just goes through. Um, then it goes down. This starts at M's. Then this moves over to the watermelon and tomato, which is practically a whole drawer by itself. <laughs> all my tomato seeds. Down here is all my medicinal herb seeds, which most of those are in the top drawer because I was working with those. And then these are flowers and culinary herbs. So that is my organizational system. So before I can start planning for my fall garden, I have to get this organized. Then I can take inventory and figure out what we're gonna plant this fall. So the seeds are organized, well, as organized as they're gonna get. I'm ready to begin planning for our fall garden. First thing you need is pencil and paper. Ta-da! You also need to find your estimated first frost date for the year. So you can just look that up online. It's, uh, you just Google what is the last frost date for and then put in your city. I found out that ours is going to be November 5th this year. So we're gonna take that information, we're gonna plug in some numbers and find out what we are still able to plant before the frost gets here. So I've written my frost date. 
then I have this handy dandy Clyde's garden planner. This has been a lifesaver for me. I love it. Um, it's only $5. You can find it online. It's a wealth of information. It saves me hours of time. One side is for fall. If you flip it over, the other side is spring over here. Obviously, we're doing a fall garden, so we're going to do this side here. And it's called Clyde's Garden Planner. What you do is you take your red line here that says average first frost and ours was November 5th so I always move mine it's kind of between the first and the eighth because it said the fifth now we have our chart here for what we can plant so as you can see LP stands for last outdoor planting okay so last outdoor planting so today is October 18th. So if we go down, so 18th is between 16th and 23rd. We'll say the 23rd, because I'm not gonna get them planted today, that's for sure. So according to this, my last, <laughs> I can plant radishes, lettuce, and spinach from here on out. However, in my beds, I know that I can cover them, which is going to extend my frost date. So any of these here, I'm gonna be able to plant as well. So I can do any of my brassicas. I can get another planting of peas, uh, beets, broccoli, which is a brassica. So pumpkins, okra, all these up here, it's pretty much gonna to be too late for those, especially tomatoes, peppers. So what I think we're gonna do is I'm gonna to try to do spinach, lots of lettuce, some radishes. I'm gonna try green beans leave this year i'm so busy i am going to skip all the brassicas so i'm not going to do broccoli or cauliflower or cabbage i am going to do beets and i think i might experiment with doing some peas we'll see if we can't get because my peas this spring it got hot too fast and they just burned up um i haven't had much luck with chard and we don't really eat chard so i'm not even going to worry about that but up here in my bed i am going to try carrots uh i can cover them and I'm determined to grow some good carrots. And I'm just not even gonna worry about from there up. So I'm gonna pull my seeds for carrots, peas, beets, green beans, radishes, lettuce, and spinach. Ooh. Okay, I think we're about ready now. I think I might have a slight seed problem. <laughs> a little bit of a addiction to seeds, but that's okay. Like I said, I bought a bunch back when I first started to find out what varieties there's so many different varieties of each vegetable and herb and fruit it is crazy so I'm narrowing them down seeing what works what doesn't work and I haven't bought seeds I buy a few every year that I use and replenish them but I'm still working through some of the originals that I first got when COVID hit a lot of the stores ran out of seeds and a lot of the stores are still out of seeds. It's hard to find the varieties that you like because everybody and their brother is gardening now, which is a good thing, but you also have a lot of people who are buying and hoarding seeds. And I know it looks like I'm hoarding seeds, but I'm really not. <laughs> I'm uh, working through the seeds that I already have before I buy more. But I did notice that one of the companies that I like to order from is called Seeds Now. Seeds now, they're, um, they used to all only be 99 cents, but now they're 99 cents, but the more popular varieties are $1.99 now. That's the other thing that happened in COVID. Everybody's prices went up, and, but I noticed on their website, um, I went to two other websites still, like every single thing I wanted was waitlist, waitlist, out of stock, sorry, no longer available, blah, blah, blah. Seeds now had a lot available still. So I'm gonna go through, and not only am I going to pick out what I'm planting in the fall, which I don't think I have to order any. I'm sure I have enough for this fall. But I'm also going to look towards spring for my plant sale and what herbs and vegetables I want to grow for my plant sale. And I'm gonna order them now because if I wait until winter, especially late winter to order my seeds, they will be gone. So I am not hoarding, even though it looks like I'm hoarding, I also plant a lot of this and I have to replenish. And I'm very thankful I did because otherwise I would not have had a garden this past year because every single seed was out <laughs> every time I went to order. 
So that is my explanation for all my seeds. I am not a hoarder, although I do like seeds. I'm no longer getting the rare varieties. I'm only getting what I know we're going to eat. Uh, with all those passes and the supplies are back up of seeds, I'll go back to buying the exotic things that I want to try out for experiments. But I'm no longer buying those seeds. I'm leaving those for, for others. So let's get started on the planning. So what I've done is I've drawn out a simple little sketch of areas that I have that can be planted. Um, I know I have space for two rows at the top, three rows at the bottom, because my green beans I had planted are already done. I can rip those out. And then I have space for two more that I never got planted. Over here I have my uh, summer squash, my zucchini and stuff that are way done. I can pull those out. And then my beds are peppers and some other things. I have to go up and check and see. I might get, be able to get a few more peppers out. I might not rip those out. I know my bed with the kohlrabi is done. So I can pull those out. And I'm going to figure out, like on the beds, I'm going to put the vegetables that are gonna have to be covered because it's easier to cover a bed than a row. So that's going to be these plants that were over here because I need to get them in right away. So my carrots and my beets are gonna go in the bed. Those are root vegetables anyway, so they're gonna to need to go in the bed. Then in my rows, I'm gonna have peas and green beans and radishes. I'll put those in anywhere. And then my lettuce, I'm just going to disperse throughout the garden. There's a few things I have to keep in mind. One of which is I have packaged seeds that I have purchased, but I also have my seeds that I have saved. I cannot plant them together with my purchased seeds because then I won't know if they're the purchased seeds that came up or if they're my seeds that came up. It's very important if my seeds don't come up, I know they probably aren't any good and I just need to toss them. Either I harvested them wrong or something, something happened. So for instance, I have Red Mountain Celtus that I just repurposed a bag and then I have some left over from here. So I want to plant them both just in case mine don't grow but I need to plant them two separate places. So I need to keep that in mind when I'm planting. Varieties, guys, look at this. And this is just a tip of the iceberg. This is just carrots. These are all the different kinds of carrots that I can plant. I mean, we have scarlet nantes, tender sweet, uh, Saint Valerie, coral, new Kuruda, Kurodu, I'm Kuroda, I don't know. I'm probably uh, butchering the name. Atomic Red, Black Nebula, Black Carrots. They're really sweet. Plus you get all those anthocyanides, or whatever you call them. Uh, Danvers, Little Fingers, Ox Heart, Parisian, and then Purple Dragon. And that's just like a drop in the bucket of how many different carrots are out there that you can buy. It is overwhelming. So that's why right now I'm trying to use up these that I got and I'm gonna pare it down <laughs> to what we like, what is going to sell well as plants and as vegetables. Most people aren't going to buy a purple carrot or a black carrot. Even though they're better for you, it's not mainstream, something you can buy at the store. So people aren't going to buy those. And uh, I know right now my business isn't huge for that. I mean, I'm not selling a whole lot of produce, but I gotta think forward or what I want to do in the future. Look, these are just radishes. Look at all the different kinds of radishes. And don't even get me started on the lettuce. There's so many lettuces. It's mind blowing. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to kind of sketch things out, get it in my head, prioritize which beds need to be weeded first and gotten into, and then we will go outside and actually get to work. kind of seeing where I'm going to have room to put things. It'll probably change five billion times before I actually get things in the ground and half of this probably won't get planted. 
like I said, things are very busy right now. So I'll be happy if I even get half of this planted, but I do want these beds to take priority over everything else. Thank you for watching. Join me next time when we'll start prepping the garden for fall. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you.